Infection Control in COVID-19 Part 10 Safe Injections and Infusion Practices Safe injection practices are intended to prevent transmission of infectious diseases between one patient and another, or between a patient and dental healthcare personnel during preparation and injection of medications. Unsafe Injection Practices Unsafe injection practices are caused by avoidable risky situations and practices including Lack of awareness of the risks of unsafe injections Overuse of injections for illnesses for which effective oral medications exist Needle stick injuries to healthcare workers from recapping needles Lack of clean workspaces Reuse of syringes because of shortages of syringes Unsafe sharps collection and waste management Steps of safe injection and infusion practices Step 1. Use aseptic techniques Aseptic techniques include handling, preparing and storing medications and all associated supplies for infections and infusions in a manner that prevents microbial contamination. Step 2. Clean workspace Maintaining a clean and hygienic workplace is important. Arrange all items properly and easily accessible. Follow workplace management. Use 5S methodology. Step 3. Hand Hygiene Hand hygiene is the basic ingredient of safe injection practice. Hands are the principal route by which cross infections occurs and therefore hand washing is the one of the most important standard precautions for preventing the spread of the disease. Step 4. Sterile and new syringe and needle. Sterile and new syringe and needle with reuse prevention and or injury protection feature whenever possible. Use recommended needle gauge for routine injection and phlebotomy procedures. Step 5. Sterile vial of medication and diluent. Inspect the vial for name of the medication. Inspect the manufacturing date, expiry date, batch number. Inspect the vial for any breakage. Inspect the vial for any type of sedimentation. Step 6. Skin Disinfection. Alcohol is used to disinfect the skin prior to injections in order to prevent infections caused by bacteria on the skin being injected within tissue. Swabbing the injection site with a saturated 70% alcohol swab for 30 seconds and allowing to dry for 30 seconds is essential in order to reduce the number of pathogens. Step 7. Appropriate Collection of Sharps do immediately place used needles and other sharps in a sharps disposal container to reduce the risk of needle sticks, cuts or punctures from loose sharps. Use puncture-proof and tamper-proof container. Follow needle stick injury protocols and PEP measures if injury occurs. Step 7. Appropriate Waste Management Appropriate types of waste containers have to be placed at point of use. Follow BMW rules for disposal. General waste should be discarded according to institutional policy. General instructions. Pre-drawn medications must be labeled properly. Medications pre-drawn at the need to be labeled specifically with the date and time of the draw, name of the medication strength of the medication and the expiration date, patient detail and the initials of person drawing up the medication. Make sure medications in your facility are prepared in a clean area, free from contamination. The medication preparation area should not include any item that has come into contact with blood or bodily fluids and is clean and dry. Medications should also be stored to as to limit the risk of tampering. Carefully examine the vial for any visible contamination. Also, check and see if it is a single dose or multi-dose vial. And remember, when in doubt, throw it out. Single needle and single syringe are used for a single patient. 
medication vials are always entered into with a new needle and new syringe regardless of whether that medication vial is dedicated for that patient only. Single-use medication vials are used for only one patient and discarded when the vial is empty or at the end of the procedure. Manufactured pre-filled syringes that may have enough medication for more than one patient must still only be used for one patient and discarded at the end of the procedure. Bags of IV solutions are used for only one patient and discarded at the end of the procedure. Medication administration tubing and connectors are only used for one patient. Multidose injectable medications are only used for one patient. Multidose medications used for more than one patient are not to be stored or accessed in the immediate area where direct patient contact occurs. Point of care devices, for example, blood glucose monitoring devices or machines, need to be cleaned with an EPA registered disinfectant or germicidal wipe. They used to be cleaned with an alcohol swab, bleach wipes can be used to clean the machine as well. Before you use either the bleach or disinfectant wipe, make sure to check the manufacturer's instructions for cleaning to ensure these specific products are not harmful to the device or machine. As for multidose vials, they should never be kept in the patient's immediate area. If the vial does enter the patient area, Providers should use that vial on only that patient. Put post-operative disposal processes into place. Appropriately discard all used needles, syringes and single-dose vials after a procedure. Make injection safety a part of your infection control program. Have a dedicated person responsible for infection control in your facility and include safe injection practices in your facility's risk assessment and infection control program. Follow needle stick injury protocols and post-exposure prophylaxis. Thank you for the patient listening.